What's going on, paranormal world? The Enfield Poltergeist case is another paranormal hunting that petrified everyone back in the 1970s. However, some situations about this particular case I do believe, while other moments I'm very skeptical about. And in today's pop culture, the Enfield hunting is publicly known for its relation to the Conjuring franchise, particularly The Conjuring 2, which came out in 2016. And don't forget, it's important to remember that Hollywood loves to put their spin on things. Many components of The Conjuring 2 was fabricated. For instance, Ed and Lorraine Warren were barely involved in the case. But in the movie The Conjuring 2, Ed and Lorraine Warren were the main stars. And I'm definitely going to touch on that later on in this video. And I'm pretty sure some people are going to comment because lately I've been getting a lot of hate comments <laughs> because of my criticism about the Warrens. Look, I told y'all, I'm calling out the inconsistencies in some of the cases that the Warrens have been a part of. It's like you can't question stuff on here without people getting offended. Just like with my Annabelle case video, the facts are there. That doll isn't haunted. Well, proven to be haunted. Same thing with the Amityville case. I'm pretty sure that there are spirits in that house, but not malicious spirits like the Warrens have claimed. And like I said, if you point out the inconsistencies and the lies about these stories, people claim that you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Tony Sparrow. Criticism is not bullying. I've heard the slick stuff that you're saying. But enough of all that. Back to the infield hunting. And before we get started, hit that like button if you think the infield case is fake. And by the way, I hope you all are enjoying this series on my channel about the Warrens. I can't wait until October. I have some great paranormal content lined up. So subscribe if you don't want to miss out on those videos. Okay, so let's get started. Enfield, London, 1977. Paranormal events manifested when the Ouija board was toyed with by one of the four siblings of the Hodgson family. The family consisted of a single mother, Peggy, and her children, Janet, Margaret, Johnny, and Billy. As things began to intensify on the daily, such as knocking on the walls, furniture shaking, heavy furniture being tossed across the room, other objects moving on their own, heavy footsteps walking all across the floor, and then you had possession. And even Janet claimed that the curtains on the wall were choking her and almost killed her. It became unbearable for the family. I mean, that's a lot of demonic and poltergeist activity happening in that house. And it even got to the point where the authorities were called and the police went to the house to, I guess, investigate and check out what was going on. And one of the cops witnessed a chair being moved on its own. They tried to debunk it, but they couldn't. Of course, unfortunately, the cops couldn't do anything about it. However, they did write out a statement. But eventually, the family contacted the local newspapers just to get the story out, with fingers crossed that someone would come out and help them. Shortly after that, several investigative groups decided to check it out. Paranormal researchers from SPR, Society of Psychical Research, became heavily involved. These two dudes, Maurice and Guy, attacked this case aggressively, and one could argue that they captured the most evidence out of anyone. Air quotes on evidence. <laughs> and most should know that Janet was a major person in this case. She was like a magnet for the paranormal, which I'm sure the researchers enjoyed, but that's the consequence of playing with a Ouija board. <laughs> it brought them to this point, or did it? But they suggested that they found barking and peculiar noises coming from Janet, along with other things. However, they did find a lot of debunked evidence, such as people catching Janet bending spoons. Yes, you heard that right. Janet was bending spoons, and she was attempting to bend like a pipe or something. Maurice also caught Janet banging a broomstick on the ceiling while they were investigating. It said that all these kids enjoyed all this attention. And another interesting point that the investigators were catching on to was Janet talking as Bill Wilkins. Bill Wilkins was the person who previously stayed in the home, and he also died there. And the paranormal investigators alluded that Janet was always switching subjects. She would always switch subjects, like, quickly, so she would change topics real fast. Now, she was doing that in her regular state. But when she was possessed, or supposedly possessed, 
She was also switching subjects just as fast. So was she faking it or not? And other investigators have studied this case and they came to the conclusion that the case was completely overrated and fabricated. And even other paranormal researchers that visited the Enfield hunting suggest that Janet and Margaret had suspicious behavior and everything was staged just to boost notoriety for the local newspapers. I mean, you know how I go. A sensational story could benefit both parties financially. They also thought that Janet was practicing ventriloquism. And get this, they also had a magician come in to investigate. And the magician said that no paranormal presence was felt. And he said that Janet was just a girl causing trouble. And that she was good with manipulating her vocal cords. And it's also funny to note, well, it's funny to me, that one of the investigators said that Janet was always jumping on the bed like a trampoline. And get this, she was one of the best athletes at her school, winning awards and everything. But speaking on Janet jumping on the bed, I feel like these series of pictures are completely fake. I mean, it's staged. I mean, in one picture, you see that Janet is up in the air and the cover is slightly tucked. And then in the next photo, which is the same sequence, the cover is unraveled. That's definitely not a levitation. She is clearly jumping onto the ground. And my thing is, they captured the picture of this happening, but they really don't have any other evidence that they captured. I mean, check this out. If she was being levitated, then that entity energy is in that room. You mean to tell me that they didn't capture nothing else? They didn't capture a figure of the entity that was picking her up or anything like that? I mean, come on, man. But um, the huntings at this house supposedly took place over two years. In the summer of 1978, Ed and Lorraine Warren sneaked into the Enfield house just to get a piece of the pie. <laughs> On more than one occasion, and said by multiple people, Ed and Lorraine Warren showed up to the Hodgson house uninvited, and they only stayed for one day, if that. And I'm pretty sure you all have heard Guy Payfair, I think that's his name. Anyway, I'm going to just call him Guy. He stated that Ed Warren personally told him that he could make a lot of money off this case. I mean, just like any other paranormal case the Warrens have investigated, they concluded right off the bat that the house was infested with demons. Seems like every case they're around, demons are there. And like I said in my other videos, the Warrens don't believe in actually conducting scientific research. They never try to debunk stuff. So all the tricks that the sisters were doing, like jumping off the bed, bending spoons, purposely making sounds, the Warrens didn't question none of that. And it's like, for example, if I'm in the woods at night trying to find something paranormal, and I hear noises and sticks crumbling and leaves falling or whatever. Like someone's walking toward me. And I freak out. And I leave. In my mind, I experienced something paranormal. But I didn't see anything. But I experienced it. But in reality, it could have been several deers walking past me. And say for instance, I took what I heard and I ran with it and told the whole town that these woods are haunted without doing any research or investigations. And I really didn't even try to debunk it. I didn't go back in the woods and try to see any animals or anything like that. Therefore, my whole case is not valid. Hopefully you get what I'm saying. I'm just trying to say that you have to do a thorough investigation of your surroundings and just eliminate factors that could have caused those noises. Just like what ghost hunters used to do. The TV show Ghost Hunters, they try to debunk stuff instead of going into it thinking everything is haunted. But one thing I do respect about the other investigators at the Enfield house is that they actually tried to debunk the evidence they captured. Something the Warrens completely ignored. And it's a spit to the family's face that the Conjuring 2 made the Warrens the only investigators in the entire movie. And it surprised me that Lorraine Warren even let it go down like that. I mean, she was living. She was still in the right mind. And, I mean, she had to approve it. Of course she had to approve it. I mean, you know, they're using their image and everything like that. I don't know, man. I just feel like it wasn't right. But you see why I can't respect the Warrens' legacy. It just seemed fraudulent. Everything around them. I mean, 
for every good story you hear about them, you hear two made up stories. You get what I'm saying? But have you ever noticed that you can't really find any information about Enfield and the Warrens? I find that very strange. I guess because they were probably kicked out of the house (laughs) and they probably only stayed like two hours. <laughs> but overall, the infield hunting pulverized the entire landscape of paranormal cases. A lot of evidence was debunked, while some evidence was still unexplainable. Could the house be haunted? Sure. We all know for a fact that Bill Wilkins died in that house. Bill Wilkins' son confirmed that. But the notion of Janet being a magnet for paranormal activity is definitely up for debate. I personally feel like she was very talented. A gifted girl like she would be a great child actor at the time and if you watch those videos and interviews of her you can tell that she's special she definitely would have made it in the hollywood industry however some people suggest that janet and the family was just acting out due to a recent divorce between their mom and their dad remember it was reported that after the split the family was struggling real bad and the girls were dealing with bullying at school So a lot of this could have contributed to all this attention. Plus, in a 1980 interview, Janet slipped up and said that the house wasn't haunted, while her other sister were trying to cut her off before she said that, and she said, shut up. And you can look up that interview. And she also said that the house didn't feel evil, but I just feel like, you know, that was a great way to get attention. You know, start some, not trouble, but, you know, start up this phenomenon, and then after it died down, come out and tell the truth i mean if you think about it all they did was fake a paranormal experience during the hype and the paranormal craze during the 1970s the 1970s was basically the birth of the mainstream media getting a glimpse at the demonic paranormal activity that could possibly happen around the world i mean it really did scare the media and the christians seeing this type of stuff especially with the exorcist that came out in 1973 as time went on with this case more and more people have called this Enfield case a hoax. And after my research, I've concluded that the Enfield hunting is completely fake. But it's still, like I said, some stuff that's unexplainable. Like the stuff with the girl's vocal cords and how she was talking like that. I mean, you know, that's some tricky stuff. But I just feel like the family wanted attention and they love the attention. So what do you all think about the Enfield hunting? Was it real? Was it a hoax? What are all your thoughts about the Warren showing up uninvited? (laughs) Do you respect that? Do you think it was disrespectful? So with that being said, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Especially if you love any and everything paranormal. And I also have some horror movie discussions. So if you're into the paranormal and horror, please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, hit that notification button so you can see every time I upload. As always, be safe. Peace.